Three decades have passed since a devastating famine in Ethiopia moved the world and motivated Irish punk rock singer Bob Geldof to stage a series of concerts that raised millions of dollars of aid. If you become so inured to human suffering, just by its ubiquity, seeing the guy endlessly on the street, a bomb on the street and just passing by, if you become inured to that, then something inside you will wither and die. It will. Now, Geldof is at the forefront of a different financial wave reaching Ethiopia. He is chairman of Eight Miles, a private equity firm investing in Ethiopian companies. You kept him alive, you people out there, well done. Now they need jobs and they're so capable. You know, let's go. Meanwhile, you guys, we need your cash to give them the jobs, but you're going to get returns. Same as the rest of the world. There is no difference between Africa and the United States. Geldof is not alone. Some of America's most successful investors are following in his footsteps. KKR, a New York-based investment firm, last year bought an Ethiopian rose farm that grows almost three quarters of a billion flowers for export to Europe each year. Blackstone, also based in New York, plans to build a billion dollar plus pipeline and hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones is backing a two billion dollar geothermal power project. The investors are assisting a historic shift. Investment is finally overtaking aid in Africa. Aid from Western countries doubled between 1990 and 2013 to $56 billion. In the same period, global foreign direct investment increased more than 20 times to $57 billion. But will it change the lives of ordinary Ethiopians who earn on average just $470 a year?